Okay, on to the next step. Now we've decompiled our Sniper SMG, we're going to import it into 3ds Max. Navigate to your, I believe it was, Sniper SMG folder in re-export. Open the v underscore smg underscore sniper dot dmx file. This contains everything we'll need to animate the weapon. As you'll see when you first import it, it's in a bit of a weird position. Now this isn't what you want. It's facing the right way along the negative Y axis, um, but it's not in the center and that's where it needs to be. So go to the Modify tab, check you've got the root bone selected, which is this little one here, and then what you need to do is just simply move it to zero. You can do this by typing in zero down the bottom here in the Y box and perhaps the X box if you need to. And then you also you you should really just move it down a bit so that you can see it properly in game. I have done a compile of this before, so I'm just going by what I did then. Negative, let's say, 15, 16 on the Z axis should be fine. Okay, once you've got it positioned like, like so, you'll notice this is all one big object, the gun and the arms. Really what you should do is click the editable mesh, click yes, uh, go to your element select, press Control A to select all, deselect the arms, and then detach the gun. This will help you when you are trying to position it in the hands. Um, before you do anything else, go over to the Hierarchy tab, click Effect Pivot Only, and center it to the object. Now it's not in a very good position, so maybe move it a bit, perhaps around there, and then just place it somewhere where you think the sniper would hold it effectively. Once you've got it positioned something like that, maybe move it back a bit so that both hands can hold the weapon. We're going to do a little bit of uh, work on this little hand arm rig bit because at the moment if you select the hand bone and you move it around it only moves up until the elbow. We don't want that. So select the I guess it would be the shoulder part, uh, that bone there, and um, go over to your animation drop down menu. Go to IK Solvers, HI Solver. Now, what you do is you go over to pip underscore hand underscore R and then just click it. Now you've got this fancy little cross thing, and guess what that does? You can already see how that will be a great help um, when it comes to animating. First, before we do anything else, just click Effect Pivot Only again in the Hierarchy tab. And just rotate it so it is a bit better aligned to the arm. You don't need to do this, but it'll help when you've got your local selection going. Um, do the same thing for the other arm. Select the shoulder slash pip underscore up arm L bone. Go to animation, IK solvers, HI solver, and then click the hand. This does the same thing to the other hand. Now it all moves nicely. Should also um, go effect pivot only again. And just rotate it to 
align better. Now, so that um, we can select these a little bit easier, what we're going to do is go over to Create under the Shapes tab rather than the default Geometry tab. Create a circle like so in the top viewport. Get your Rotate tool, hold Shift and just rotate it 90 degrees. Doesn't really matter if it's exact, but it's pretty easy if you're using snaps. Again, just rotate it 90 degrees so that you get a sphere. Doesn't that look lovely? Right click one of the circles, click Convert to Editable Spline, click the Attach button, and attach the other two circles. Now you've got a big sphere to work with rather than this little blue cross. Duplicate these so that we have two because there are indeed two arms. And just drag one over. Maybe rotate it to a line as well. Position it nicely. Do the same to the other. Rotate it. Make sure it's positioned correctly. Now you'll notice we've got a bit of an easier way to select things. Um, to make it even easier, uh, click your one of your spheres. Uh, open up the rendering dialog. And I believe... Yes. Um, just check Enable in Viewport. That will give you a nice big sphere. Change the side so there's only three. And um, just do the same for the other one. Three sides. That makes it, again, even easier to select. Rather than looking for these little bones. Yeah. Um, not quite done with these yet. Uh, up the top here, there's a button that says Select and Link. It's a picture of a little chain. Click the crosshair type thing and just link it to the sphere we made. Do the same on the other arm. Link it to the sphere. Now, instead of trying to find these little guys, you can just select these big spheres. That'll make things a little easier. Perhaps reduce your work a tad. Um, another important thing to note, you can go over to the Motion tab when you've got a sphere selected. Notice when you're moving the arm, it bends downward. Um, I may be in the wrong place here. Ah, oh, select the crosshair, the uh, little lines that we received earlier, and I believe we should be able to, ah oh, yes, there's a little uh, dialog here, IK solver properties. Under that, uh, there's a property you can edit, it's called swivel angle. This is also helpful if you want to perhaps have him bend his arm in a different direction. Notice how it's bending in a different direction. You can change this whenever you like during animating. But I'm not sure it may cause some problems if you do it too many times in the wrong way. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going for. But I've got to keep it under 10 minutes. Okay, yep, I'm up to 9 minutes, so I'm just going to cut this one off here and then resume uh, right off.